Welcome everyone to another tutorial in SPSS. Today we're going to look at a two-way ANOVA. Uh, in this type of analysis, we're going to be looking at a school district's data set, but it can really be used uh, inside of the confines of education circles as well as uh, beyond them. So if we look here, we have uh, three different variables here. We have gender, uh, which are coded as one or two. Uh, we have an intervention, and that's uh, coded as one, two, and three, which we'll, I will explain momentarily. And then uh, test scores for these students, uh, who again are male and female, uh, and they, and they um, went through trials of an intervention with varying degrees of duration. So if we look at the variable, variable, variable view uh, in SPSS here, we'll see first off that again, we coded uh, gender as male one, female two. So that's two levels of this nominal data. Uh, again, here it's important that we, uh, that is not coded as scale or ordinal, but uh, nominal in nature. The tiered interventions, as I mentioned, some students uh, received six weeks of the intervention, others received 12 weeks, and then finally others received 18 weeks in hopes of making a determination on the overall test score here, which is a scale um, construct as it's labeled in the uh, SPSS program. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and to analyze general linear model and univariate in nature. Uh, we're going to, again, I can move these back for you. We're going to be looking at the dependent variable. So what are the test score implications if we consider gender and if we consider those different levels of the tiered interventions. So that's all we want to include in these boxes here. We're going to leave model and contrast alone. We're going to go into plot and we're going to put the, um, we're going to put the gender, it doesn't really matter which axis we put them on, but we can put the gender on the horizontal axis. We can also put the intervention on the horizontal axis. And then what we want to do is uh, create a gender and then uh, times on a separate line, the intervention. And those are the things that we're going to be comparing within this univariate uh, profile plot. Then we look at the post hoc analyses. We don't need to do that for gender because that's going to be uh, uh, two levels. So it's either you know, male or female, as opposed to the intervention, which has those three levels. We're going to also click the REGWQ uh, post hoc analysis. And that's going to be quite good for, for maintaining power while minimizing uh, errors for this type of ANOVA analysis where you have, um, where you have uh, two groups, uh, the males and females, with similar number of participants. So we're going to, going to click continue there. And finally, we're going to click into options. And what we are most interested in is displaying the means for the overall. So again, we're going to push that over here. We're going to click uh, descriptive stats estimates of effect size and homogeneity tests there. We're going to keep it at the 0.05 interval, confidence interval level uh, for education purposes in particular. And we also are going to want to uh, have a look at, we also are going to want to have a look at the intervention mean, gender mean, and overall mean. Uh, we're going to, uh, as well, click compare main effects, and we're going to use a Bonferroni. So with that in mind, we're going to click continue, and we're running, ready to run the ANOVA analysis. So if we look at the output file, there's a number of things we want to pay careful attention to. Again, uh, we have, you know, clearly demarcated, we have uh, 24 males and 24 females, and then we have 23 um, people who uh, had six weeks of intervention, we have 20 people who had 12 weeks, and we only had five people who needed 18 weeks of intervention for this um, uh, descriptive uh, statistic on tiered intervention. Uh, again, uh, this also describes the relative means for males who had six weeks, 12 weeks, and 18 weeks, and then females of the same number. If we see here a, a, a quick glance, we see that scores went up from six weeks to 12 weeks to 18 weeks. Uh, and then we also see scores <coughs> uh, slightly rose from six weeks to 12 weeks and then rose more substantially to eight weeks for females. 
Uh, if we look at the significant levels here, the, the Levine's test, um, <clears throat> because this is not a statistically significant outcome here, then we can make the determination, as it says here, that the null hypothesis, hypothesis um, uh, is, is, um, is, is not confirmed, so that we know that the error uh, variances are not necessarily going to be an issue. If they were significant, then we might want to consider that ordinarily speaking. So if the significance of the error variances is something to keep in mind. However, typically with this type of ANOVA analysis, it's not something that we're going to be overly concerned about as well. If we look down here further between the between subject effects, we see that gender had a significance of 0.091, which does not meet the 0 0.05 threshold. On the other hand, we have intervention, which is statistically significant at the 0 0.001 level, meaning that the intervention had a significant impact on overall um, <coughs> uh, test score. Um, again, right here, test score. So this intervention was significant to the test score. And we also know that the partial, uh, um, the partial ETA squared uh, shows that the intervention had a 26.9% um, uh, uh, connection, or so that the test scores were 26.9% impacted from the intervention directly. So that's one way of looking at the partial ETA squared. Uh, we can continue to go down further um, <clears throat> to look at the uh, overall estimates, the, we kind of looked at that already, but we really want to pay attention to this pairwise comparison. So this is this is where I believe the, the powerful component of the using the Bonferroni um, uh, post hoc analysis comes in. So we can look at between um, the differences between those who received six weeks, those who received 12 weeks, and those who received 18 weeks. We know that the intervention, as we mentioned right here, had a 0 .001 significant impact on test scores. So that is uh, statistically significant. However, just by looking at this plot, we cannot tell where the um, most impactful uh, interventions came. So that's why we want to look at them between them. So between 6 and 12 weeks, we have a 0 .047 significance, so that is. So there was a significant difference between six and 12 weeks. Between six and 18 weeks, there was also a significant difference um, in the pairwide uh, uh, comparisons here. Um, however, if we look at 12 to 18 weeks, we do not have a statistical significant difference. So <clears throat> that's interesting to know that uh, between 6 and 12 is significant, between 6 and 18 is, uh, but between 12 and 6 uh, is as well, but 12 and 18 is not. So, um, and then 18 and 12 is not as well. So that's, you know, it's using different boxes to say the same thing. So some of those are more significant than others. And this basically, uh, we can go back and tell here that uh, the, that the largest changes um, you know, occurred in certain of these areas than others. So for example, um, we had a significant difference uh, between here and here and here and here, uh, and then six and eight, but not directly um, between 12 and 18 by themselves. If we look at um, some other parts, which we pretty much covered most of this, the grand mean is all of the means put together. Um, and then let's have a look at uh, again, these are the numbers of students who had each of these weeks. Let's look at this plot, which is interesting to see. We see that uh, there are test scores here on the y-axis, and then on the x-axis, we have gender showing that males scored considerably higher than females as a whole in terms of their averages. We can also see here that the interventions, um, and this is not between males and females, but for everybody, uh, the interventions, the scores continue to rise uh, from 6 to 12 to 12 to 18 weeks uh, in a fairly linear path. And then uh, what's particularly interesting about this last graph is we can see that uh, males, uh, males compared to females of six weeks of intervention were very similar in terms of scores. However, and then also at the 18 weeks were fairly similar with the female scoring slightly below uh, the guys. 
uh, the 12 weeks of intervention studies show a, uh, a significantly sloped differential between female scores ranging around maybe 3.4 and the male scores averaging around, let's say, 5.7, 5.8. So that's something that we want, might want to dive deeper into. Why were the males who received 12 weeks of intervention doing that much better than the females with that pr particular intervention construct? Um, so that's basically univariate analysis um, of variance in SPSS using a two-way ANOVA. Um, I hope that made things a little bit more clear within this SPSS portal. That is very uh, cumbersome at times, but it's a tool that we can use towards effectively engaging in research projects and being able to hit the ground running within uh, our school districts and within our particular research projects that we are passionate about. I hope this was informative and I look forward to sharing more workshops with you soon.